the JAK mutation occurs in a hematopoietic stem cell. So it occurs in a very long-lived uh, immature stem cell that uh, often now we've learned it occurs maybe decades before a disease is actually diagnosed. And that kind of information has been just elucidated in the last couple of years. Even though we've suspected it, we actually have pretty good uh uh, modeling now to indicate that. So there's this long, long latency uh, to get it. Why some people get it, uh, we, we don't quite understand. But then once it starts expanding, uh, so when it's just in one in a million stem cells, but if it starts to expand at the stem cell level, that's when we start to see this VAF uh, in the peripheral blood and also disease. So we, we know uh, some of our therapies just lower blood counts, and they do so by interfering with DNA metabolism or, or DNA proliferation, but they don't take out that, that clone, you know, they don't suppress the clone specifically, they'll just lower blood counts. Um, and uh, so again, how helpful will that be? If you control blood counts, sure, some of your thrombosis risk may be, uh, that is mitigated maybe by high blood counts is reduced, but you still have right that JAK2 burden that is probably driving, uh, changing the quality of those cells and driving thrombosis risk and also progression risks. So the great advance has been in interferon-based therapy and uh, FDA in the United States approved ROPEG interferon, which is interferon alpha 2b, uh, which is a very long acting interferon that See, we've known about for many years seems to reduce cell counts by reducing the JAK2 burden, and it does so at the stem cell level, not at just the peripheral blood circulating cells, but it seems to suppress the JAK2 clone at the stem cell level. So that over time, as the stem cell gets suppressed, the amount of blood that's coming from that clone as expressed in the VAF tends to come down so that we see individuals who have PVARA, maybe their variant allele frequency is 42% when they're diagnosed. And after six months to a year of, of uh, ROPEG interferon, their blood counts normalize. And along with it, the JAK2 VAF comes down to levels below 10%, and now reports after five years of maybe even below 1%. And concomitant with that, Reduction in VAF is reduction in disease progression, count control, and hopefully thrombosis risk. So this is very exciting to us because you know we're acting on the knowledge of JAK2 and what it means, VAF, and now finding a, a medicine that somehow is targeting that at the stem cell level so that you're having this reduction of that clone. Hopefully all of those risks will be squelched as we squelch that clone.